Am I the a-hole because I call my psycho ex's unrelated child my daughter? Buckle up. 15 years ago I was 25 and was finishing my contract and my then GF of 3 years Natalie was acting increasingly strange. I came back from a 2 month assignment and was prepared to break up with Natalie. She came by and gave me the good news she was pregnant. I asked how far along she was, she said 5 weeks so I broke it off with her and told her she needed to do better at math. She refused the breakup and insisted the baby was mine, so I told her the following. 1. Paternity test, and 2. If the child was mine we can talk about financial support and custody arrangements with lawyers. She refused both and told everyone we both knew that I was a deadbeat for knocking her up and leaving her. I told everyone I was on a two-month assignment when she conceived, but a few insisted for the sake of decency I house her and give her limited support. I consulted a lawyer about this mess and the lawyer made it very very clear that any overt support I give could be seen as me taking responsibility. So I told these friends that and most dropped it, except one guy, who again insisted that charity couldn't be used as a legal cudgel like that. I told him if he believes that he can house her. He agreed to drop it after that. Child was born and not even going to do the whole she didn't look like me because most babies are born with squished faces and all I saw were the pics she sent me with messages like Emma wants to know where daddy is and shit. She still refused to take any paternity tests, but her constantly showing up with that baby got to the point where I filed in row. Fun fact, in my state, a permanent row is not, in fact, permanent. It is two ducking years long. The only way to get it longer is if there was a violent crime associated. And apparently bugging someone with a baby that's not theirs is not a violent crime. So my life for the last 14 years was me renewing the row every two years because, once it clears, Natalie shows up again with my not child. I did eventually find a nice girl, get married, and now I have nine-year-old son, Henry. My wife Kim is well aware of Natalie and Emma. When the cycle begins again, I always say the same thing. 1. Paternity test. 2. Once paternity is proven, I will take custody and get financial support set up. Natalie always refuses and says both are insulting. Recently the cycle started again, and this time Emma showed up first. She approached my son during a school event, visit to the zoo, and said hi, I'm your big sister Emma. Henry knows about stranger danger and ran away to a teacher. I had to have a very very painful talk to the teachers and parents that were at the event about my relationship with Emma and Natalie, and how Emma was never my daughter. I even called her my daughter once or twice in the conversation. After the group disbanded, one of the mothers confronted me and said that while Natalie was in the wrong talon, this poor child I was her father, calling her my daughter was mocking the situation. I kind of get where she's coming from, just I can't help this child, and the honest truth is playing light of the two-year cycles is the closest I can get to finding peace in the situation. Additional information from Oop on his same responses to multiple questions about custody and DNA tests edit. To answer the repeated question, in my state the mother has to start the petition for the father to be established and the test to start. There is no instance where a father can start the petition. There was a chance to do this when Emma was born, but the window was exactly one month, and I was much too focused on the row, not thinking the paternity angle would bite me in the butt. One last time, to everyone saying just ask for custody. That'll force DNA test. Literally can't be done. Been through this enough with a lawyer, and have consulted with other lawyers. There are laws protecting children, and a lot of them exist for good reason. I'll explain it the way my lawyer explained it. Imagine there's a woman that ran from an abusive ex. She finds out after she escaped she's pregnant. She gives birth, never puts the ex on the birth certificate, never tries to file for support because she wants to get as far away from him as possible. He finds out years later, and tries to rope her back in using the child as leverage. She can just say no and the state has to let it go. There is however a provision if the father was involved enough to know when the birth was, that he could submit his DNA to the state within 31 days of birth as a potential father, but that time has long passed. The law is designed this way on purpose. In the eyes of the family court, I am a random person, and I was never claimed to Emma. If you think the state wants all children to be claimed by fathers and will gladly submit any DNA test whenever any potential father shows up, find a random single mom, call the family court and say you want to claim her child. I am tired of everyone acting like all I needed to do was fill out one sheet of paper and this nightmare would end. Please, just call a lawyer for a free consultation, or post on legal advice and ask them. It doesn't work that way. Update, June 17, 2024 got off the phone with my attorney. We have a preliminary hearing on the new row this week. We will most likely be issued a temporary row, and then after that another hearing for the permanent row. CPS is investigating Natalie and Emma's living situation. The teacher's report held a lot of weight, and my lawyer thinks that this might actually be a way to end the madness now. In family court, for minors there exists something that's like a temporary, court-appointed guardian, I think the term is guardian ad litem, who is only a guardian for legal purposes and procedures and decisions of such, including for medical. If the family court appoints such for Emma, we can ask this temporary guardian for the DNA test, get this put to ground. The madness might actually have an ending in sight. Adding here, I feel like I need to explain the relationship I had with Natalie all those years ago. When I got back from my two-month assignment I was already dead set on breaking up with her. Her oh wait I'm pregnant, was never going to make me marry her. In fact, 
I doubted she was pregnant for several weeks. The last year of our relationship several red flags appeared in her behavior, ranging from demanding I check in with her while at work, only hang out with friends with her present, extreme bouts of jealousy if I ever seem too friendly with women, including waitresses. I was in a line of work that demanded me being away for long stints, which she hated, but also kept me out of her reach for long periods of time. I think it was halfway through that last year I realized that when I was away, I did not miss her. In fact, I was relieved to plop into a cot and fall asleep after long hours of work without thinking about her. When the pregnancy turned out to be real, I made it clear that with a paternity test, I would pay support, split custody and be a co-parent and nothing more. She wanted me to be her husband, no question asked. No test, just pure blind faith and devotion to her and the child. The test she insisted, was insulting. There was never going to be a relationship, and there was no relationship to salvage with Natalie. On the advice of the first attorney I hired, the deal was no test, no contact court update. June 20th, 2024 The preliminary hearing on the new row went well. Emma and Natalie were there, and we discovered that Emma is currently living with her great-grandmother and has a guardian ad litem, court-appointed guardian on legal matters. My lawyer thinks this means whatever was found in Natalie's home situation warranted removing Emma, and potentially severe enough that the great-grandmother only has physical custody and the need to appoint a guardian ad litem. During the hearing, we went through the whole song and dance, the past rose, the whole deal. My lawyer turned to Emma's representative and said we were willing to submit to a DNA test and put this to bed. Natalie looked like she was having a conniption at that, and her own lawyer urged her to shush. Emma's representative accepted and we were cheek swabbed in the courthouse. A temporary order is now in place while a second hearing is scheduled in the upcoming weeks for the permanent two-year order. The order covers immediate family on both sides, and as I've detailed in the past, Natalie is actually good with following court orders. Oddly, we have about four weeks before we have the definitive test results back, but I'm not too worried either way. P.S. There were some people who thought the court couldn't use charity as a cudgel was the father. Well, that's Jim. Haven't talked to Jim in 10 years, but Jim is gay, and hated Natalie. He just also happened to be a gif. The shirt off his back kind of dude, and as long as I knew him volunteered at a food pantry. His protests came mostly from naivety not self-interest.